Well, good morning, folks. Do you all have one of these? And is it hard to start? I mean, hard to pull? Hard to pull start? Well, I'll show you what's going on. The problem could be in your valves. It's a Honda GCV 190 engine, and it's on a pressure washer. And I have it kind of tilted up here so I can work on it. But let me show you what I found when I took the valve cover off. So the cover, I just used my 10 millimeter socket, take out these four bolts. A lot of times these covers can be pretty hard to get off because they are, um, they use sealant to put them in place. So I use my heat gun and heat it up real good and then just uh, gradually pry it in spots and tap on it and eventually you can get it to pop off. Ah, that's the telephone. We don't answer that. But the first thing I found when I was looking at the valves, they look all nice and dandy, don't they? I went to push on them to make sure that they were, are working. As you see, this is what they look like when they're working. They push in. And the exhaust valve here was stuck in place. I couldn't, couldn't push it down at all. Uh, I got a hammer and I tapped on it a little bit and I was able to get it loose so now it's going up and down like it should um, but what happened when this valve stuck was that this rocker arm got cracked and you probably can't see it and I don't know if you can see it it's a pretty fine crack uh, I'll take it off and I'll show it to you and to take these rocker arms off, basically you just pull up this pin. How cool is that? And this is what they look like. This is the part that rides on the cam, of course. Now you can see that crack. So we need to replace the exhaust rocker arm. Boom, and just like that, Jeff has one ordered for you. And there's the part number. Looks like it comes without the, uh, the set screw and whatnot, so we'll have to transfer that over. So you loosen this nut up with a 9mm. And you just twist it out. So since this valve was stuck, I don't know how much damage was done in there to the valve guide. We'll find out. Just keep our fingers crossed when we fire this thing up. We'll make sure to put some lubricant in there to try to help it the best we can. Put this in the new rocker arm here. And we're going to have to adjust these valves. Might as well do both of them. I'll show you how to do that. And these aren't cracked, so that's good. Oh, you want to make sure to put some oil on that. And just like that, you installed your new rocker arm. But we're not done. We have to adjust the valves now. To do that, we need to find top dead center. And if you don't know what top dead center is, that means when the piston is at its highest point in the cylinder. And they usually recommend you do it on the combustion stroke, which is the piston goes down, sucks in the fuel, and then as it comes up again, that's the combustion stroke and when it gets to the highest point in the cylinder that's top dead center on the combustion stroke and that's where you want to set your valves usually so we'll have to rotate the engine over here until we get to that so I'm gonna have to go get some specifications uh, to see where to set the valves at So some guys will tell you that uh, 
you don't have to have the piston, the combustion stroke at top dead center. You can just do it on any time the piston's at top dead center. The Briggs and Stratton engine uh, specifically states to make sure it's on the combustion stroke. And I think there are reasons for that. So that's the way I always do it. So I'll show you how to find that. So I'll stick something down in the spark plug hole so I can watch the piston going up and down while I'm doing this. And as I pull the rope, I'm going to want to watch the, uh, well, there's the intake valve getting pushed in. So that means it's opening as the piston goes down and it's sucking fuel into the chamber and now as the piston raises it's on the combustion stroke so this is where we're going to want to set it when the screwdriver reach, reaches its highest point which is indicates the piston at the highest point which is top dead center oh went a little too far so I'm going to roll it back here you can actually move this a little bit okay keep a close eye on it so you can I keep missing it what you want to do is just pick a set point to look at as you watch the screwdriver raise up So it looks like on this engine, when this cam lobe here, the tall part of the lobe, is pointing straight up, that is at top dead center. Uh, on some of the other Honda engines, they actually mark this cam gear and you line that up to find top dead center, but let's just confirm that. Yep. There we are. That's where you're going to want to adjust it. And all the specs I found uh, had the intake at six thousandths and eight thousandths for the exhaust. 0 0.006, 0 0.008 inches. Let's see where we're at here. I'm going to do the intake first. It's the one you're looking for right there. And you just slide it in between. And remember, we didn't mess with this one. And it feels pretty good. I think I might tighten it down a little bit. So you loosen up the lock nut, oh, and then you are going to turn that clockwise. This little dude is going to get turned clockwise a little bit. Not much. Be a little more. So when you're putting your feeler gauge in here, you want some resistance as you're pulling it back out. So I think that's about right. So let's tighten this down. Not too tight, you can break it. And recheck. Yeah, 
Alright, that feels good. Alright, over to the exhaust side. 0 0.008. Feels about right. Yep. I don't tighten these down too tight because you can strip them out. Don't ask me how I know. But I know. Recheck. They always seem to loosen up a little bit after you tighten them down. Yep, that feels good. I think that's where we want to be. So now we need to clean off some of this uh, gasket sealant on here and on the cover, and then we can go back together. And you got to get all the adhesive off the cover here too. I use my heat gun to heat this up. Makes it come off a little bit easier. Still a pain, pain in the butt. Careful not to scratch things up too bad. Wire brushes can work pretty good too. As I said, I'm going to spray some lube on here before I put everything back together. And That's the phone. We don't answer that. So I get this stuff at the auto parts store. And you just want to do a bead about like that. And make sure to go around the holes too. I always get impatient, as you can see. My first bead looks a lot different than the rest of them. But you know what? I'm not too worried about it. It's going to work. Just don't want to overdo it. Try to get it down in one. All right. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Come on. That one doesn't want to start. Let's try this one.
Come on. And I'm not going to cinch them down real tight with the drill here because you can overdo it. I'll get a socket wrench to do that. Now I gotta find that spark plug. Where did I put it? Where'd it go? Ah. I need to get this thing out of the garage. It's too cramped in here. I'm still trying to find this damn spark plug. Anybody seen it? Here's what the cracked one looked like. All right, finally found it. We're ready to test this baby out. <laughs> 